Hey friends over on YouTube, so great to see you today. I hope you are well, safe and sound wherever you are in the world. In this live video, I'm gonna be going over seven surprising things that weaken the immune system, that can make somebody immune compromised and susceptible to viruses and bacteria. With the coronavirus scare out there, it's important to be diligent with removing the interference and letting the body heal. So I have some studies I'm gonna share with you some of these, probably all of these, are going to be very surprising to you. And I also have a bonus tip at the end that I'm gonna share with you. I see Sacramento, I see Sapor. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to see where you're tuning in from. I'm in beautiful Miami, Florida. So I'm gonna start with my list here. Uh, I'm gonna be looking down because I have the studies here on my computer, so I'm gonna be referencing these. So don't mind me if you see me looking down from time to time. Let's start with the first thing here, but before I do, before I get into this, let me just make a disclaimer and share a disclaimer that I am not an infectious disease expert. I am not an immunologist. Uh, that is not my expertise. However, I, am, I have been in the health space for 11 years. I'm a certified functional health practitioner, best-selling health author, and the founder here at Keto Camp, and I understand how the human body works, and the human body is absolutely incredible. We have the world's greatest physician at our disposal 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And that is our innate intelligence. That is the human body. We were designed to thrive, not to just survive. We were designed to deal with viruses and bacteria. You have viruses in you right now. I do as well. But a healthy body, a healthy immune system is able to combat that. So I'm gonna share with you right now seven things that weaken this physician within your body, this innate intelligence. Let's remove the interference before we start adding things into the mix. So this is not gonna be about take this supplement, eat this food, uh, not so much. It's gonna be about what can you remove that you might not be aware of that is weakening, weakening your immune system right now and leaving you susceptible to the coronavirus, to other viruses, to bacteria, because the coronavirus is not the last virus that's gonna come around. So the first one here, might be obvious, but I'm gonna explain the science of what's going on here and share a study with you. The first surprising thing weakened in your immune system is going to be being stressed out and being fearful. Right now, more than ever, people are stressed out. We're dealing with a unique situation here with the coronavirus that the entire world is dealing with collectively. For the first time in my life, this is a problem that the entire world is dealing with together. It's not a hurricane that hit Miami or 9-11 in New York, which is more of a regional, situational type of problem. It is a worldwide problem. And if you turn on the news, you are going to think the world's coming to an end. You're gonna think that all is hell in this beautiful world we live in, which it's not the case. The, the media is gonna feed you fears because fear is what sells. If you, hold, you heard the old adage of news media, if it bleeds, it leads, right? So they're gonna talk about crazy things that are going to scare you. You're gonna be on your Facebook feed and you're going to see negative articles because people are <laughs> really engaged with that. But stress makes the brain boost the production of cortisol and the body to produce cortisol. We know that chronic levels of cortisol, which is your stress hormone, it's not good. Acute levels of cortisol, totally fine. So there was a study done um, on PubMed and I'll share links with you when I'm done with this video on YouTube and I'll share the studies with you. A psychological stress, and it's called the psychological stress and the immune system, the human immune system, a meta-analysis study of 30 years of inquiry. And I have a couple of excerpts from this study and I'm gonna share with you what stress is doing to weaken your immune system and leaving you open to the coronavirus, leaving you open to other viruses and bacteria. Here's a quote from Zapolsky, one of the writers. Quote, stress-related diseases emerge predominantly out of the fact that we so often activate a physiological system that has evolved for responding to acute physical uh, emergencies, but we turn it on for months on end, worrying about mortgages, relationships, and promotions. Well, we know now, more than ever, people are worried about where they're going to get their next paycheck. How are they going to pay their bills? So that mental stress creates a physio physiological uh, problem in the body. The, the study says the results of this meta-analysis supports this asser uh, assertion that in one sense, stressors with the temporal parameters of the fight or flight situations faced by humans, evolutionary ancestors elicited potential benefits 
to changes in the immune system, meaning short levels of stress, acute stress working out, actually strengthens your immune system. But the more a stressor is deviated from those param parameters and becomes chronic, so every single day, all day long, watching the news, being stressed out, the more components of the immune system were affected in a potentially detrimental way. Okay, so this 30 year study is showing that stress, thinking about being fearful, will weaken your immune system because it activates something called your sympathetic tone, which is your sympathetic nervous system. And when that is turned on every single day for weeks and months and months, that will have a negative effect on your immune uh, cells and your immune system. So we want to find ways here to activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight. So you think of um, rest, excuse me, your parasympathetic is your rest and digest, okay? Sorry, I have my dog here and he was, hey, he was throwing up a little while ago, so you might hear him kind of wheezing. Um, we want to find ways to activate that parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. So going for long walks, that's a great way to do it. Uh, doing some nasal breathing, some less left nostril breathing, that's a way to do it. I'm going to do a little exercise with you real quick that I learned from John Asaraf. Here's a great way, if you find yourself stressed, do this, it'll activate that parasympathetic nervous system and boost your immune system. Let's all do it together here on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. Let's take a deep breath in through our um, nose. Deep breath in. Hold it for a few seconds, about three or four seconds. Hold it. And then you're going to slowly release through your mouth. Yeah, let's do it one more time. Deep breath in through your nose. Hold it. And then you're going to slowly release through your mouth. So whenever you find yourself activating that sympathetic nervous system and you're being stressed out, you're being fearful, do that exercise. In through the nose, hold it for five seconds, and then exhale for five seconds through the mouth. We want to find ways to activate that parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest. Uh, because when we're in constant fear, the body will uh, act in a negative way. The body will weaken the immune system. So that's the first thing. and I'll share that study with you from PubMed. It was a 30-year study that showed stress and being fearful will weaken the immune system. The next thing is going to be uh, the second surprising thing that weakens your immune system. This might not be surprising to you because y'all are uh, following the ketogenic and fasting lifestyle, but it's going to be eating a, a diet that is high in carbohydrates, sugar. And when I say carbohydrates, I mean whole grain, wheat bread. If you look at uh, Dr. William Davis, who's the author of Wheat Belly, he, he showed that two slices of a whole grain, heart healthy, uh, wheat bread, raised blood glucose, blood sugar levels, as much as a can of soda, 12 ounce can of soda, or a Snickers bar, okay? We know that those who are immune compromised, those who are at high risk for the coronavirus and other viruses, the flu, are those who are type two diabetic, those who have high amounts of blood sugar. So we don't wanna eat right now a diet that's high in carbohydrates. We don't want high levels of, of glucose in the blood because here's the deal. Out of the 70 trillion cells we have in the body, all our cells could only choose two sources of fuel. Either we're burning sugar in the form of glucose or we're burning fat and then we're producing ketones. Sugar is a toxic fuel source in the body. Okay, sugar creates a lot more byproducts, a long list of byproducts as opposed to fat and ketones. So I'm gonna compare burning sugar to a Mack truck that is speeding through the highway right now with all of this smoke coming out of its exhaust pipe. Okay, that's what's happening within your cells when you're eating carbohydrates, eating sugar. When you convert to eating more of a healthy fat, low carbohydrate, ketogenic lifestyle, if you wanna call it that, that's like a Tesla cruising through the highway, much cleaner for the environment. So we wanna teach ourselves right now, it's more important than ever to be burning fat instead of sugar. Choose the more efficient energy source and your body will boost its immune system. It will boost that innate intelligence and the body will have the building blocks to do what it was designed to do, which is to deal with viruses, to deal with bacteria and feel really good while it does it. So we wanna make sure we're switching over. And by the way, here's another thing about sugar. When you're eating carbohydrates and let's say you're taking vitamin C, which is not a bad idea right now, take some vitamin C, I'm taking it every three hours, a thousand milligrams. But when you have high levels of glucose in the blood and you take vitamin C, guess what? Vitamin C and glucose compete for the same receptor sites on your cells. They're, they go through the same GLUT1 pathway, 
Meaning, if, you have, if you're eating carbohydrates and taking vitamin C, your cells are not gonna care about that vitamin C. Your cells are going to prioritize that glucose. It's gonna use, it wants to get rid of that glucose because that is high levels of glucose is poisonous to the body. So vitamin C and, and eating carbohydrates, it doesn't work well, but when you're in keto and you're taking vitamin C, it's much more effective, all right? So we wanna eat more of a high fat, low carb diet, doing intermittent fasting. Right now, more than ever, it's so important to prioritize our health, and I think the world is starting to understand that. So that's a positive that's coming out from what's going on right now. Hey, on YouTube, um, I see there's several on you of you on here. Let me know where you're watching from, and please hit the thumbs up button on this video if you haven't done so already. Facebook as well, and Instagram, show me some hearts. Uh, it really helps YouTube and the algorithm get this to more people, which could really help somebody if they watch this. Hey, Lisa, good to see you on here. All right, the third thing, this is gonna come as a surprise. I just read a fascinating research study from Professor Brian Peskin, who's coming back on my podcast to talk more in depth about it. But the third thing that weakens your immune system is going to be vegetable oils, okay? When you have a weakened cell membrane, which is the bodyguard of your cells, it'll increase the chances of that virus, the coronavirus, any virus, to get into your cells and create damage and duplicate that cell. That's where the coronavirus begins to become a problem for you. So vegetable oils cause massive amounts of inflammation around your cells and it could let the virus penetrate your cells. So here's some, some, uh, an excerpt from the study I'm gonna read for you here, okay? This is very important, I hope you're listening here. For optimal protection, an EFA formulation, which stands, so EFA stands for essential fatty acids, should optimize cell membrane um, structure, viruses must bind and join the cell's, the cell's membrane, and EFA formulation can maximize blood flow. EFAs must be consumed on a daily basis. Enveloped viruses like the coronavirus are susceptible to inactivation and destruction by certain fatty acids. So what's happening is when you eat vegetable oils, corn oil right now, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, canola oil, grapeseed oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, these oils are creating inflammation around your cells and it'll increase the likelihood of a virus penetrating that, that cell, getting into your DNA and creating damage. But when you eat and consume essential fatty acids, and I'll share which ones I'm consuming, it gives you kind of a barrier to that virus and the body can deal with it. So overall, our results demonstrated that exogenously supplied from a supplement, uh, LA, which is linoleic acid, and AA, which is arachidonic acid, could interfere with the optimal replication of human pathogenic coronaviruses. Hmm, very interesting. Quote, there are millions or billions of the, these viruses out there. The immune system fights back and attacks the virus. This is what causes inflammation and fever. But in extreme cases, the immune system goes berserk, particularly in the coronavirus, causing a cytokine explosion, causing more damage than the actual virus. So this is from why the coronavirus has been so successful by Ed Young, science section in the Atlantic, March 20th, 2020, which was just a few days ago. So this is brand new information right here. Here is another excerpt from this study. This is such a powerful study. I can't wait to get Brian Peskin, Professor Peskin on my podcast next week and on the YouTube channel so you can go into depth about this. Essential EFA, so essential fatty acids, are known to limit this excessive overreactive cytokine reaction. PGE1 made from essential omega-6, yes, omega-6 is important as long as it is the unadulterated omega-6, or more directly from GLA, activates cytotoxic T lymphocytes, your body's most powerful killer cells of intruders, infections, bacteria, and viruses. And that is from the British Society, uh, British Society for Immunology. Very powerful statement right there. The evidence is compelling that unadulterated, fully functional, essential EFAs are fundamental to successfully treating any viral-related illnesses. So I know what you're thinking. What the heck are EFAs? How do I get it into my diet? You get it from a high-quality, unadulterated omega-6. The cell membrane is actually 33% omega-6. So I'm personally um, high dosing every single day with a product called Pureform. I'll put a link down below or you can go to Keto Camp Supplements with an S, supplements.com, 
just type in pure form. That is what the essential fatty acids are. It's a nitrogen infused product that helps your cell membrane get the fats that it wants. You could also get a product like Andrea's seed oils, great product, unadulterated omega-6, but the goal is to give your body these building blocks so your cell membranes could protect you from viruses, bacteria, infections. And I'll, I'll go into more of a deep dive on this on a future video and podcast with Professor Peskin. Please hit the thumbs up button here on YouTube if you haven't done so already. I just went through the first three things that are weakening your, your, your immune system. I have some more to go here. Number four is going to be, sorry for the bad news friends, alcohol. Alcohol, right now is not the time to have alcohol, okay? Alcohol will weaken your immune system. Here's a study from newscientist.com. Uh, it's entitled, Too Much Booze Blunts Your Immune System. So I'm gonna read this for you. Monocytes exposed to a bacterial chemical suffered a double blow when inebriated. Not only did they make half as much type one interferon as their abs abstainous equivalents, they also overproduce an inflammatory chemical called tumor necrosis factor alpha. Although it's important for initiating inflammatory responses to bacteria, continued production of this chemical can damage the tissue, okay? Sabo, which is the author of this piece, says that the results fit with evidence from medical records that chronic heavy drinkers with HIV die sooner than non-drinkers. They also fit with earlier studies showing that the immune system of heavy drinkers might be less vigilant against cancer. Sabo suggests heavy drinkers should be aware of damaging their immune system. So he said heavy drinkers a few times. I think it's a good idea to abstain from alcohol altogether right now because here's what's going to happen. The body is going to prioritize getting rid of that alcohol because it's a poison to the body. It's gonna prioritize getting rid of that alcohol and not prioritize doing other things we want it to do, like dealing with infections, dealing with whatever it is. Yeah, the wrong, so most omega-6 are not going to give you the results you want. Most omega-6 are inflammatory. It means they are, they're called adulterated, bastardized omega-6. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about unadulterated, high quality, cold process, the right way, omega-6. It's hard to find it, but those pure form at ketocampsupplements.com, or I'll put a link down below, and Andrea Seed Oils are two companies that I trust that they do it the right way. So um, we wanna avoid alcohol right now. It's, I know we have extra time, we wanna, we wanna do things to kinda of deal with the stress, but alcohol is not how we wanna do that. We wanna find other ways to, other outlets. So the next thing is going to be, this, the fifth thing that, that lowers your immunity, making you immune compromised, is going to be sleep deprivation. Sleep is one of the foundations of health. I believe sleep is more important than diet and exercise combined because hey, you could go years or weeks and months without food. You could go days without water or exercise or weeks without exercise, but you can't go weeks without sleep. You'll turn into a crazy person. So here's a study that is called Sleep and Immune Function. Uh, you can find it on PubMed. I'll put a link for it down below when I'm done here. Research shows that sleep deprivation has the same impact, effect on your immune system as a physical stress or disease, which is why you may feel ill after a sleepless night. So I'm gonna share a little bit more about why we wanna get sleep and I'll give you some, some really quick tips on how to get better sleep. Prolonged sleep curtailment and the accompanied stress response invoke a persistent, unspecific production of pro-inflammatory cytokines best described as a chronic low-grade infection. So when you're chronically sleep deprived, you have chronically high levels of a low-grade uh, inflammation. And also produce something called immuno, immunodeficiency, uh, which both have detrimental effects on your health. Sleep and the circadian rhythm, here's an important sentence, are strong regulators of immune, immunological processes. The basis of this influence is a bi-directional communication between the central nervous system and immune system, which is mediated by shared signals, neurotransmitters, hormones, and cytokines. So what the study is saying, it's very important to be consistent with the time you're going to sleep and the time that you're waking up. So going to, my schedule is going to bed around 10, 10.30, waking up around seven. Following this healthy circadian rhythm, will teach your body to boost its immune system, okay? The study goes on to share that there is many immune functions display prominent rhythms in synchrony with the regular 24-hour sleep-wake cycle. 
reflecting the synergistic effects of sleep and the circadian system on these parameters. So it's important to go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, get enough sleep for you as an individual, and your body will build up its immune system. Your body will do what it's been designed to do, which is to heal, which is to deal with things. Hey, Coach Tara, good to see you on here. So we wanna make sure we're getting sleep, okay? We wanna make sure we're not being sleep deprived right now. So here are some things you can do. I have a book, by the way, called The Power of Sleep. It's a best-selling book you can get on Amazon. I went chapter after chapter on sleep. By the way, on Friday, this Friday, I'm gonna be releasing a new podcast with Dr. Michael Bruce, who's America's Sleep Doctor. And it's gonna be a YouTube video as well where he, we go into sleep, we deep dive into sleep. But here are some tips for you. Make sure your bedroom is cold and dark, okay? Studies show 62 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit is that sleep, sweet spot for good restorative sleep. As dark as possible, stay away from the news at night, stay away from stimulation at night. Have some sort of routine that signals to your body that you're getting ready to wind down and go to sleep. So now more than ever, let's prioritize sleep. Sleep is free, sleep is restorative, sleep is more important than diet and exercise. So please, keto campers, I hope you're taking your sleep serious right now because as the study just shared, it'll dampen your immune system if you're not prioritizing sleep. So that was number five. Number six, uh, before I reveal number six, please hit the thumbs up button and if you're not subscribed to this Keto Camp YouTube channel yet, please subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I go live. I'm gonna be giving a free webinar this Friday on um, how to master the immune system with keto and fasting and specific supplements that I've been using. If you wanna get registered for that free webinar taking place this Friday, March 27th at 12 p.m. Eastern time, go to benazadiwebinar.com. I only have space on this Zoom webinar for 500 people and it's about 55% full, something like that. So first come, first serve. I'm also giving away over $200 worth in free downloads. So that's benazadiwebinar.com. Hopefully I could see you on there. Hey Mario, hey Richie. Number six, too much exercise, okay? So there is, we don't want, we want to exercise right now for sure. Good to see you, Rhonda, a super camper Rhonda. We, we want to make sure we exercise, but not too much exercise. So here's a study that my colleague, Dr. Caitlin uh, Zelazowski, I think I'm saying her last name right, Dr. Caitlin shared with me, and it's, it's on PubMed, and it showed that 10 minutes, three times, a day could boost your immune system by 50%, okay? If you exercise 10 minutes three times a day could boost the immune system by 50%. We hypothesize that acute and chronic moderate exercise induces a level of stress hormones that downregulate excessive inflammation within the respiratory tract and aids in activating innate antiviral immunity, shifting the immune response towards a TH2 profile, therefore, therefore balancing the responses to an excessive immune reaction to these path pathogens, okay? So when you exercise on a moderate level, on a consistent basis, your body's gonna upregulate its immune system to deal with viruses. However, prolonged exercise, intense exercise, too much exercise, shift that, it shifts the balance too much towards a TH and away from a T1, actually throwing allowing the virus to gain a better foothold and causing greater pathology. Woo, that's, so there's a bell curve here. We wanna make sure we're exercising, we wanna make sure we're bringing it on a consistent basis, but we wanna make sure we're not over-exercising because that will weaken your immune system as well. So that was number six, I have number seven here. Seven surprising way that um, your immune system is becoming compromised and I have a bonus tip for you. I hope this has been helpful so far. If it has on YouTube, please hit that thumbs up button and it's good to see all of you joining me today. I hope you're safe and sound uh, wherever you are. Number seven is going to be a, a sedentary lifestyle. Okay, we know that sitting is the new smoking. Uh, this study from Joseph Knight back in 2012 um, says this. It's called Physical Inactivity Associated Diseases and Disorders with those who are inactive, those who are on their couch, not exercising, not moving. More specifically, physical and inactivity increases the risk of coronary, heart, and cerebral diseases, uh, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, several cancers including lung, prostate, breast, colon, and others, osteoporosis, fractures, dementia, and amongst others. Okay, scary list right there. However, even among the very old, 
not only continuing but also initiating physical activity is associated with better survival and function. So we wanna make sure we're moving. We wanna make sure we're getting outside, we're taking long walks, we're getting sunshine, which has its benefits as well, vitamin D production. We wanna make sure we're moving around. We're not sitting on our couch all day long. Right now, more than ever, it's important to move around because your body's also gonna activate its lymphatic system when you're moving around, when you're jumping up and down. We want that because the lymphatic system flushes toxins out of the body, lowers inflammation, and lets your body, that innate intelligence, do its job. So those are the seven surprising things that weaken your immune system. I have a bonus tip right here. It might be the most surprising of them all, and you might think I'm crazy when I should suggest this, but there are some signs to show that this is actually happening. So this is also from my colleague, Dr. Caitlin. She is one of the hosts of the Women in Wellness podcast. So go listen to that podcast, especially if you're a woman. I was actually on that podcast, so Women N, the letter N, and then Wellness podcast with Dr. Mindy Peltz and Dr. Uh, Sonia Jensen. The, the bonus tip here, oral health, okay? A compromised oral health, compromised oral health will open you up and weaken your immune system. We know that when you, we have uh, bacteria in the mouth, bacteria could enter the body from the mouth and it could go to different areas in the body. It could go to your lungs, it could go to your respiratory system and it could weaken your respiratory system. We know that the coronavirus has an affinity for that respiratory system, all right? So here's the tip for you. But if you wanna strengthen your immune system, floss every day after your meals, okay? Use a high quality floss. I use doTERRA on guard floss, but floss every single day to get rid of that bacteria to reduce the chances of that bacteria going into your respiratory system and allowing your body to heal, okay? So flossing can boost your immune system, okay? There's a study here by Philip Mahone, um, PhD medical doctor, and it backs it up to Canadian study. So I'll put that link down below when I'm done with this video. So those are your tips for today. Uh, which is the most surprising one? I'm gonna give you an overview here. I wanna know which is the most surprising one. Was it number one, stress and fear? Was it number two, carbohydrates, sugar? Was it number three, vegetable oils? Was it number four, alcohol? Your least favorite probably. Was it number five, sleep deprivation? Put the number down below. Was it number six, too much exercise? Was it number seven, a sedentary lifestyle? Or was it the bonus tip, the oral health? Uh, put the number on which one resonated with you the most. Uh, so Rachel says number six, um, dental surgeon. Oh yeah, Angela, our angel, right on. Diane says six, bonus tip, says Catherine. Um, cool, cool, cool. I'm glad that you guys are resonating with that. Oral, cool. Well, I hope this was helpful. If it was, please hit the thumbs up button on this video. If you wanna join my live webinar, uh, Christy said number six, if you wanna join my live webinar on Friday, how, how to master your immune, your immune system with keto and fasting, go to benazadiwebinar.com and I'll be sure to do it. Janae says, I use On Guard Floss as well, good job. Lisa says, Oral Health, glad I floss, good job. Rhonda says, five and seven. Hey, good to see you, Den... Densky, Densky, I hope I'm saying it right. Hey Jake, good to see you brother. Jake the snake, the white mamba. Bonus tip was beneficial for you. Catherine says number six. Number four says Robert. Okay, please share this video with a friend. Share it with somebody who is getting benefits or, or you believe would benefit from this video. Facebook, tag somebody on here, share it on your profile. On Facebook, on YouTube, Copy and paste this and send it to, a, to somebody via text. I'm gonna be going live more often here on YouTube. Uh, keep, stay posted for the Keto Camp Podcast. I'm gonna be, re be releasing an episode tomorrow on the Keto Camp Podcast with Dr. Lane Phillips and we go into the statistics of the coronavirus. We go into the stats of the coronavirus. We go into what to expect, what foods to eat, um, how to protect yourself, what's the difference between a virus and a bacteria, and so much more. So stay tuned for that. That'll be out on my Keto Camp podcast tomorrow. And I can't wait to share that with you. It'll be on YouTube as well. Uh, I'm gonna answer some questions here on Instagram. YouTube, I appreciate you all so much. Facebook, I appreciate you all so much. Be blessed, stay safe, much love for you all. And thank you so much for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button, share it with a friend.